Okay, what I want to do over the next few minutes is uh, bring you something secret that might help you on the AST as far as textual analysis of poems is concerned. Step one is nothing earth shattering, you've probably heard it many times before. But as far as textual analysis of anything goes, when presented with a block of text for analysis, you have to read it through a couple of times at least. I get that you're often pressed for time, but when it comes to poetry, the only way to go is to take your time. So make sure you read the question. Look at what it is you're supposed to be looking for in the poem. Then read the poem or the text, whatever kind of text it is. Then read the question again. Make sure that you're looking at the right things. And then I would go back and read the poem or the text of whatever kind it is for the second time. Do that much at least, and you should be on the right track then I know that I th in some versions of the AST you can't bring in a highlighter but you need to highlight or underline whatever it is you're allowed to do what seems to be the most important aspects of the question being asked and the bits of text the lines or phrases in the poem that seem to you to be the most directly related to the question so let's have a look at an example Question number one, what impressions does the Macaulay poem give of Rushy Lagoon? And two, what does the writer of the passage suggest about poetry? And these refer to an actual AST question. So the first thing I would ask is, what would you highlight in this section? I was introduced to some poetry at school and it kind of crept up on me and drew me away from the rock and roll music I loved at the time. I studied English at university and became an English teacher. After teaching for 12 years, I was drawn into quite different work. After some time out of teaching, I lost interest in poetry and even began to wonder why you would bother reading it at all. But as I grow old, I notice how certain phrases from poems are stuck in my mind. The words, it is a world of sense and use. It's one of the phrases that seems to sum up an important feeling for me. I couldn't remember where the words came from or quite what they mean, meant in context. I googled the words and found that they were from a poem by Tasmanian poet James Macaulay. So, what would you highlight in that? And you don't need to do much. I'd say two, maybe three little phrases or clauses in that are particularly pertinent. And the ones that I think are... Uh, I lost interest in poetry and even began to wonder why you would bother reading it at all. And certain phrases from poems are stuck in my mind. Okay, as we analyze the poem and look at how to answer the questions, the reasons why those two phrases in particular are highlighted should become obvious to you. The first quotation. I lost interest in poetry is the reason he's writing this. He's saying, I used to feel this way. And what's implied by the past tense is, now I realize that I was wrong. The second quotation, certain phrases from poems are stuck in my mind, tells us why we should bother reading poems in the first place. And this is what he has come to realize. The things we remember have significance to us. All right, let's look at the poem itself. At Rushy Lagoon. Wet mirrors covering soft peat. Swag-bellied graceful mares in foal. Red umber bulls on plashing feet, with mild white face and curly poll. Crutching time, each heavy yew is trimmed and slides off down the chute. The mountains are cut out in blue, an opalescent sky is mute. Ducks loiter, children play for tea. In the home paddock, a lone goose follows the cows for company. It is a world of sense and use. Now, if you spend a lot of time analyzing poetry, you'll be able to say things like, well, each line is written in a clear iambic tetrameter and in rhyming couplets, but that's not gonna help you write an AST answer. Again, it's all about highlighting. And in this case, the only thing I think is really, really important is that last line. It is a world of sense and use. If we jump back to that first block of text, you'll see he's even signaled that for us. The words, it is a world of sense and use, is one of those phrases that seems to sum up an important feeling for me. So he's done the work of identifying what's important in the poem for you. 
why. The title of the poem, uh, Rashi Lagoon, gives information as to location, but no clues as to interpretation. It doesn't tell us how to understand the poem, so it's not important. All the lines leading up to the last are really ways of observing things or describing things. The only line that actually says why we should bother with any of this observation and description is the last. So the last is probably the most important. So if you take nothing else away from this little presentation, it's when confronted by a poem, the last line is generally very important. All right, there's another block of text that follows the poem in this particular AST question. I had read the poem years ago in my 20s, never particularly carefully, and I had never studied Macaulay. When I googled Rushy Lagoon, I found it was the name of the first farm in Australia to be sold for more than $10 million. It was bought by the rural entrepreneur Bert Farquhar, who's apparently legendary, in 1986. He built 128 kilometers of irrigation channels on the property so that Rushy Lagoon became a premier sheep and beef breeding farm with 8,000 cattle and 50,000 sheep. I knew none of this background when I first read the poem, but you can see how the world of Bert Farquhar might be described as one of sense and use. You see there's that last line again. Without knowing what it was about, I could feel the way James Macaulay celebrated the world of Bart, Bert Farquhar, and I can see why the phrase it is a world of sense and use would come to mind when I looked at Bush turned to farmland. What I'd highlight there are these phrases, a premier sheep and beef breeding farm with 8,000 cattle and 50,000 sheep. Bert Farquhar might be described as one of sense and use. Without knowing what it was about, I could feel. That in its own is very important. And last, I looked at bush turned to farmland. So let's deal with those questions themselves and how to answer them. What impression of Rashi Lagoon does the poem give? Consider that question very carefully. First of all, impression singular is what you are asked. This means that you can ignore the long list of individual impressions, plural, that the poem gives you throughout most of those lines. Concentrate on how all of those impressions relate to that last line of the poem. If we're asking for an overwhelming impression, it's about whole, all the little things that he observes and what their significance is. In other words, what is the overwhelming impression given by the whole? What do all of these little individual impressions add up to? How do you start answering that question in an AST context? Well, you come up with a list of your own impressions. Write in descriptive adjectives. For example, does this place Rushy Lagoon, when you read about it in the poem, seem to you to be scary, calm, idyllic? What words would you use? Most of the poem, is it sensuous? Is it vivid? How is it described? A series of details is all that's required here. A series of details that are noticeable, that make an impression or an impact. Otherwise, why write about them? The last line. Um, to say that this is a world of sense and use, does that mean that this is a world that is practical? Is it real? Is it useful? Is it valuable? Is it functional? I think all of these things are important. So think in terms of synonyms for sense and use, and then you're doing most of the work. Forget about what the speaker says. Here's another tip. Think about the tone or the mood of the poem. How does he feel about what he's saying? Not what he's saying, but how does he feel about what he's saying? Is he admiring of the things that he observes? Is he impressed? Is he struck? Is he captivated? Is he approving? I think all of these things apply. And here's a crucial distinction for you to realize when you're asked to comment on something like what impression of Rashi Lagoon is given. You don't need to write an essay. You don't really need to write polished prose. You're not making an argument. A series of bullet points, even, is enough. Don't waste your time polishing a response that asks you for your impressions. Be like the poet. Give us a series of impressions. Again, think in adjectives. What words describe what the speaker says and how he says it. Question two was, what does the writer suggest about poetry? Again, look at what we've highlighted when we were observing what's important in those blocks of text. Most of the work is done for us already, if you've done that. I lost interest in poetry and even began to wonder why you would bother reading it at all. Certain phrases from poems are stuck in my mind. Without knowing why, I could feel. Everything that you need in order to answer that second question is in those three quotes. 
again, look at the specifics of the question. It's not what the writer says that's important, but what he suggests. What does the writer suggest about poetry? So what is what he's saying, suggesting? He's saying, I couldn't figure out what the point of poetry is, and that suggests I now realize that there's a point, but I didn't realize it at the time. That's what the writer is suggesting. What is the point based on what we've highlighted? It's not a question about this poem, but about poetry. Read the question again. What does the writer suggest about poetry more generally? Poetry sticks in your mind. Remember, he says certain phrases kept coming back to him. So that's what he's suggesting about poetry. Poetry sticks in your mind. You don't need to know the background of a poem i.e. why it's being written, wh whether Rushi Lagoon is a real place or not, to know that the poem considers Rushi Lagoon the place to be important, and the poet considers it to be important. Okay? Poetry captures and conveys important feelings and emotions. How is what the writer is writing suggesting this? Well, he says he could feel the emotional weight of the poem without necessarily understanding what all of the words meant or understanding what this place was or what the poem was actually referring to. That's what I mean about tone and mood. If you can get that the poet likes this place, that's enough, okay? That suggests the poetry conveys an emotional state without your actually having to understand every specific of what the poem's about. Poetry works without you knowing how or why it works. Things just stick in your mind from poems. Uh, lastly, if you want to be really clever, there could be an implied question in all of this, which is, is poetry itself a thing of sense and use? If a farm is a thing of sense and use, is a poem a thing of sense and use as well? And I think maybe, yes, it is, but we don't quite know how or why it's useful, but it seems to be useful to us. If you can do all of that, you've probably written a brilliant answer to that question.